Hey, welcome to my stream tonight. Uh, just gonna spend a moment here getting started. Sorry about the fan in the background. Um, been going like this the last few times. Um, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, come say hi in the comments. Show me that you're here. I know there's a bit of a delay, but. We'll, we'll be getting started here in just a minute. All right. I'm actually pretty excited about this topic here because uh, I'm going to cover um, a technique uh, that's used to render views that was basically the go-to um, for the early days of JavaScript frameworks. like. Originally, it wasn't expected that uh, that um, you know you'd be running JavaScript on the server. So it was always expected that you'd be running some other backend in HTML, and that um, your JavaScript uh, would you know run on top of that. It was actually hydration first. Did you tell him? No. So I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty psyched about about this uh, about this. Uh, this topic in general. Okay. Anyway, sorry, actually give me two, two seconds. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Sorry about that. My youngest had a little bit of a thing, so um, he wanted a good night hug. So uh, thank, thank you all for joining the stream. Uh, we can get started here pretty quick. Um, as usual, I'm gonna, gonna start uh, talking a little bit about um, This Week in JavaScript first. It's been a few weeks. We've been off since, uh, I guess it's been three weeks uh, since we've lasted a stream. And you, you'd think that we'd have, um, you know, a lot of stuff to talk about there. But honestly, uh, I've been really heads down working on um, on a lot of the work around the new solid release. That's been a big part. But, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but a few things did catch my eye over the last week here since we came back. Um, it was kind of funny. I don't know if you saw this, this uh, Twitter post that was going around about five topics you can talk about for 30 minutes without any preparation, um, which instantly made me think of the stream because generally that's, I'm always throwing stuff together last minute, but it's it's cool. If you were part of this thread, it's really interesting. A lot of people have a lot of interesting interests and I, I thought it was actually really cool. Um, a, lot, a lot of people were participating in it. Um, the other big one f f f uh, for me was, uh, we had an interesting discussion with Ryan Florence from Remix about streaming. And uh, streaming has kind of a, been a hot topic because of React 18 uh, coming out with streaming, and obviously Solid's release that came out this week also has streaming. And uh, he, he, he brought out an interesting point, um, which was that he said, the more experiment with streaming, the initial document, the more it seems only useful for the following case. When the user has a fast network and the server is slow at preparing that response, better invest in making your server fast. And in some ways, he, he's not wrong. Like, it's the latency to your data that's going to make streaming more apparent, right? You, the whole trick to streaming is the faster you can get the static content to the person and the, how much that differs from the data, that's, that's, how, that's how the more beneficial it's going to be. Um, so I, I agree with him on that side. But I, what I was trying to say in, in this discussion here was that 
it always just falls back to the original rendering method, right? Like if, if, if you have a slow network, it's not going to be any worse because you're streaming. Right. Um, but you know, the, he brought up the trade off is the problem with streaming is we have to respond with the headers when we send that first chunk. So if we start streaming the response before we load all the async data, we have to say that it's like 200, even if something might error later. And this causes a lot of, it makes things a lot trickier, right? This is the big trade-off. Um, you might be getting, you know, certain parts of the content sooner, um, but but you're not necessarily going to, you know, know everything up front. Um, Remix has been built off this concept of like fetching all the data up front, knowing what you need based off the nested routing, um, which I think is really, really, really smart. Oh, hi. Much more people saying hi in the chat. <laughs> So many. But um, essentially, where, where I was getting at is there is a lot of complication here, but I think there's a lot of potential here. And most of that comes in that there's lots of different types of ex experiences. And it, I guess what, what I'm saying is the more we move towards patterns that enforce less JavaScript, things like partial hydration, things like um, Oh, I see. <laughs> cool. Th thanks, Theo. More, more like we approach things like partial hydration. More like we approach things, um, um, you know, uh, React server components. Streaming starts looking more beneficial, right? Because the more you can push those interactive parts into like islands and things down, and have separate pieces coming in, the more you're going to notice the difference. Um, I, I, I made kind of a comment about, you know, I don't know if you go to the edge, aren't you more likely? to have faster static response times and slower data response times. Like, and sometimes you're not always in control of your backend. Like sometimes requests take different lanes, sometimes you're using third-party APIs. So um, essentially streaming is just kind of this great equalizer in that it makes the worst case better. It, you know, um, and I, I put up an example and whatnot and, you know, this is kind of an interesting kind of point in general, though, because it isn't it isn't just like a straight win. My examples are kind of terrible. I show a loading uh, state for like 100 milliseconds, and everyone knows that a quick loading state isn't the best user experience. So, you know, it does take a little bit of uh, cons consideration that, you know, these demos that we've been seeing from streaming so far, like the React one, haven't really... You're, you're, you're going to have, um, you know, mostly unchanged content, right? And my, my final kind of conclusion or thoughts on this topic of streaming from this thread was that basically streaming is beneficial when you have higher data latency, when you have multiple data dependencies with differing response times, you know, that related like suspense boundaries. And when things like the shell, like the static part, make a greater percentage of the page and contains other types of assets like images. Um, because in theory, you know, if you can start loading those images sooner, you're not only like kind of progressively loading the page in front of the user, you're gonna actually make the total response time of, of the whole page faster. It's not just, it's just not, it's not just the pieces that you can load in sooner. It actually affects the whole load time. And Truthfully, we're probably leaning on the browsers a little bit hard for this because, you know, as I kind of followed, um, you know, thinking about kind of characteristics, a lot of the spa framework apps we have today might not benefit from this as much as, you know, islands architecture or MPAs. But I think with, you know, things like React Server Components, the question, you know, of where this value comes changes. And it's really hard to see today because we, we haven't seen very many implementations like that. One final comment from Ryan Florence that I thought was really kind of interesting was he he said he he basically showed the difference between streaming and not streaming. And keep in mind this is a remix app, so there's like a ton of script files. I I, I don't know why why it built up this way, but let's see if I can get it on the screen. It's still pretty small. Um, you know, he, he's got a whole bunch of scripts. What he's showing was with async, where he waited the whole time and then loaded the resources, versus with streaming 
where you can see that the, the resources start loading while the page is loading, the total response time was basically the same. And the funny thing you're noticing here is these resources are actually taking longer <laughs> to come in in this version than in this version. It, like that, you can see that they're actually visibly shorter. They spend less time waiting. So some of this might just come down to the way the browser schedules multiple parallelized requests. It might be out of our control. Right. So as much as this, um, right, like as much as like in theory, this should be good. I, I we might be still hitting cases where, um, the, you know, this platform itself isn't set up to leverage it as well as it should be. Like, it's hard to understand why the t total load time is the same in these two examples. Because as I said, look here, they're clearly starting earlier. And like, it's a, it's, it is, it is a bit better. You can tell that it's a bit better, but you know, not as beneficial as, you, as you'd think. So, I think we need to keep our eye on it and where the benefits are, and see how the future progression of how we build apps affects how we actually um, how beneficial this is. I think the other side of the argument is, um, if you guys haven't heard of it, there's HP Status 103, um, which lets you respond early to requests with resources to preload. That might be a big changer for this graph because then this graph could start also loading assets before this finishes sending. Um, and in that case, you know, maybe that's enough. The benefit of streaming comes in more so when you have other types of assets, not just the, these JavaScript assets coming in, but you, it actually benefits you to render parts of the page sooner and you know, different data lanes. So yeah, I, I mean, there's trade-offs and I, I th I'm most excited that I think this is an area where there's a lot of exploration um, possible. <laughs> HP2 for the win. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, there's been a lot, uh, a lot of good benefits made to to the biggest. The biggest unfortunate part was that the push didn't end up solving our problems as much as we'd like. The, uh, they did some smart stuff with the purple architecture from Google um, in terms of kind of a shell app architecture. It's funny though, everyone was talking about it in 2017, 2018, and then it just disappeared. I, I don't know what happened where why people stopped talking about it. Even even Google stopped talking about it as much. But like Polymer kind of pioneered this, this approach that really took advantage of push and whatnot. It still had this problem that it didn't know what to invalidate and what not to send. Like there, it wasn't perfect. Um, and I guess maybe that's why it fell away to the wayside. But um, I, I think that, I think that they, they are aware of this, you know, the browser vendors and they are working on stuff. Think, I think early hints is gonna be a, a, a game changer. And maybe in the end, streaming's role in this whole picture is much more subtle. Like maybe, maybe it isn't about like just streaming everything as soon as possible. Maybe, you know, if we have granular control over the resources and data sources we have in our app, maybe we selectively decide, you know, at what point we want to stream stuff. Um, and, you know, kind of certain things cause the stream to wait and other things don't. I think maybe it gets to that level of control. That seems like something pretty complicated and something you, maybe you, you wouldn't want to manually figure out yourself, but you know, that's why framework designs and stuff are coming in here, you, you know, do experiments, find ways to make this usable. Um, you know, this is a complicated area. There are benefits, but um, maybe it'll take us a while to figure out how to leverage them. That's me speaking optimistically. Realistically, this technology has been around since 1997. So you got to ask yourself why more people aren't using uh, streaming um, and, because like, you know, it's been available. It's been it's been called the lost art so many times. I've lost count. I, I, I pulled it up once. There's a Brian. I, was it Brian Atwood? I'm trying to remember. Jeff Atwood. Yeah, article for 2005 where he was already calling it lost art. And then you know, when Facebook released Big Pipe in 2008 or nine, they were still like, oh yeah, no one's doing this anymore. And same thing with Marco in 2014. And then you know, React in 2000. 22, you know, it, we keep on going back to this. It's just, I, at a certain point, we, we want to push the ability of what we can do with performance. And maybe, maybe it's, you know, architectural shifts that have this get away from us every time. Um, but I think we're on the precipice of another architectural shift in front end. And I, I don't know, I, I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see if streaming plays a part of it. Um, some bigger players, bigger companies, people with you know maybe different needs than the average developer think it's important 
and have been investing in it. So probably something to take notice of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was going to say that's a good, good point. Mm. Ajax, what came out in 2005? And yeah, I mean, I think the problem back then was we just didn't have good tools to use it. I remember using Ajax in like .NET update panels, which is horrific experience. jQuery came in and wrapped it. Um, and, you know, like, I, it, I think at that time we just didn't have an ecosystem. It was like the most amazing thing that ever happened to JavaScript. And then um, like we weren't there ready to, to pick it up when it came in. Um, it took well into 2008 or nine for the first JavaScript frameworks to come out. And, uh, you know, part of that too was the browsers at the time. You got to remember JavaScript was like slow, like really slow back in the day. And it wasn't until 2007, 2008, suddenly all these browsers like really invested in it. You know, um, Chrome came out, uh, what, WebKit. Oh, I can't remember what Mozilla engine was out at the time, but essentially around 2000, 2008, suddenly everyone started investing in their JavaScript engines and they all got like 10 times faster. At the same time, Node came out. Um, it was just, it was so fast that no one was already in the space. It was, it was kind of funny. Um, I, as I said, I, I was, I, I jumped on there, but I was like working in .NET and backend stuff at the time. So, you know, it, it, it was, it was definitely a different time. But what's cool about that whole thing is that different time is basically um, sort of where where I'm thinking of tying into what we're, we're you know talking about today, really, um, because you know I, I'm going to do a little bit of a what should I call it history lesson um, for a second, kind of as I talk. Um, I'm going to say, but let, let's just open a. Uh, a Actually, before we do, before we do this history lesson, sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. Let's let's first just talk about today. We're gonna we're gonna look at um, what I was saying, uh, building something similar to Petite View or Alpine. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, um, I let's take a moment and just kind of look, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because Alpine JS and Petite View use a technique that was very prevalent in 2010, 2009 period frameworks. And I think that's what makes this kind of interesting because we'll be able to kind of do, I, I'm going to use this as an, exa as an uh, a chance to basically do a bit of a history lesson while we kind of go through this. Streaming existed since 1994? Yeah, I, I wonder if you could control it. As far as I know, um, 1997 chunked encoding, uh, HTTP 1.1 was is, is officially the the beginning of when people uh, like were doing stuff with it. It was HP 1.1. Um, anyways, back to Alpine. Uh, essentially, uh, and I can blow this up again. Sorry, wrong window. What Alpine is, is you server render this or use a static HTML page and you maybe put a script tag on your page and then you write your template right in your HTML. And as the document loads with the JavaScript, it it basically hydrates this template, but this is a little bit different than uh, hydration or server-side template. Um, in that, essentially, in those, what you're seeing is the final realized version of of your app, generally, with 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 those kind of templates. Where this is really sort of a client rendering technique. It does augment content per se. But but what 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 you what you're doing here is actually writing the bindings like the expressions into the HTML and then cl and client rendering them. It, it was just really common, you know, to have a Rails backend or PHP backend, and you want JavaScript to do dynamic stuff. Um, but you know, it, it was it, you were kind of limited by, by the tools. Like people hadn't even really thought about doing much in the way of like. Like the whole like modern like isomorphic wasn't a thing back then. So you had two options. You you basically um, you know were dumping strings into HTML like inner HTMLing it, or um, this was like basically the first chance of being able to do something declarative with it. Yeah, this is this is a good point actually. Um, you can't really have reusable components in Alpine. Um, 
it, it's, a, it's a slightly different model. I, I think you can, you could kind of force it, but it's not really the, the default uh, position. And I, I, I'll see if I can explain that a bit later. Cause um, I use knockout JS um, for years and knockout JS works exactly like Alpine and petite view. Let's see if I can find petite view here. Um, here it is, petite view. Petite view is, is basically the same sort of thing. Um, yeah, here's an example, right? Script tag and then scope and then you bind the count and count plus. Some people call these progressive enhancement, but if you think about it, these frameworks don't work if you don't have JavaScript on the page. Like, I, I don't know if that's someone's, like whose definition of progressive enhancement that is, but this isn't progressive enhancement because it, you're, this isn't like the page you render in HTML is actually workable. This needs JavaScript still to actually render anything. But as I said, very popular with like the PHP Laravel crowd um, who, you know, don't need a JavaScript on the back end, And then they can kind of like use these frameworks for like the more interactive components on their page. Um, so th this, this, as I said, made a comeback with Alpine and Alpine is, is a pretty popular framework here, you know, um, what is, let's see, tw almost 20,000 stars on GitHub. Um, basically kind of reinventing your, the pattern that we were using back in like knockout in 2010 um, and, and whatnot. And if you're, if you're wondering why this approach kind of went away, uh, you know, the way the, the dodo bird, so to speak, um, that was because um, essentially the performance of going through and um, kind of parsing the DOM nodes wasn't was uh, sorry framework wasn't actually great. Um, it's to be fair, I definitely when I was first working on Solid before I went to JSX, um, I I did um, manage to get okay performance out of this approach, but just to, if, if, you, if you want an idea of, of where frameworks like this sit, um, here's Alpine over here, right at like the end of the list. And here's Knockout right over here. And I, ca I can't remember if Reactive uses this approach too, um, but you know, Vue supports this approach, but that's not generally how they're gonna be doing their templates when you enter the benchmark. But this approach is definitely on like, the blazer side of the table, not on the, you know, well, solid side of the table. So um, essentially just, just to kind of get a perspective of why we moved away from it, even with server rendering, you know, when we have full control, we can do a lot more with our compilers and our tooling in the JavaScript side. So slowly by slowly, most frameworks stopped supporting this. Um, and over time, um, it actually became niche enough that Alpine JS came out like way after the fact and kind of brought this back. But to be fair, people still um, uh, pe people people uh, still ended up um, having this need. So I still get asked about this, you know, weekly perhaps. So yeah, that's 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 a, that's kind of my introduction. I don't know if anyone has any questions about these. Uh, frameworks and as mentioned here, there, there's there's some some mechanisms to make this experience nicer. Yeah, and I think that's a pretty powerful one because we're going to see as we kind of go ahead and build this that like we we have to do a few little tricks here to make our experience nice. So um, yeah, let's let's let's. Let's, uh, sorry, I don't know why there's a solid hacker news demo in the middle of this whole thing. Um, let's let's just start building st stuff, um, I think. It's funny, I, I got through the whole intro without, actually one last interruption before we get into building stuff. There, there was a couple other things that happened this week, um, more specific um, to, oh, thank you, Jacob. Um, more specific to obviously my, my neck of the woods, which is SolidJS had a couple big announcements. So I'll just repeat them here in case you hadn't seen them. Uh, that was interesting. Um, where are we going here? All right. 
first of all, that's, that was a promoted ad. Interesting. Uh, Solid Hack uh, was announced this week, and it's a hackathon. It's a long run hackathon. It's going to go over the next three months. Uh, Twelve thousand dollars in prizes that we raised from sponsors. There's basically three different categories, and we're just hoping to kind of energize people building solid projects and checking it out. Um, so really excited about that one. And the other big one is we released 1.3 um, this week, which um, has HTML streaming, like I've been talking about. It has some, some cool tricks with error boundaries to work with streaming and uh, on the server. Um, better support for things like Astro with multiple async hydration routes and some really cool stuff with uh, third party uh, reactivity without wrappers, like being able to use MobX directly in your solid views. Really cool stuff. Someone actually made a meteor tracker today and he was just saying like, he was so stoked. He was like, this is, this, he's like, this, this could just replace the default templating for Meteor. It's so much nicer to use than something like React for this because Meteor is all reactive and it just feels like it's a native solution. So I'm really happy that this one went through. Okay, so that's, that's, that's enough solid news unless all the rest of this is, I mean, big shout out to Alexis. Every other tweet here is probably him uh, uh, showing us a new ecosystem library he made. What do we got? MDX, support, um, error overlays, new version of the Babel labels plugin. Definitely check out his work if you get a chance. It's crazy. Yeah, honestly, I, I would, Theo. I actually don't know how to do that from within my interface in, in here because um, I'm just in StreamYard. You're going to help me get a better streaming setup soon. Um, this is this is like the, the, the most, I don't know what's the term, ghetto, maybe that's not politically correct to say anymore, version of 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 streaming that we can do here. So you're going to help me. Um, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, anyways, without much further ado, I'm just going to throw a quick banner up here so that I can, uh, so I can edit it later. Let's build, right? Let's, 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 let's do something. Thank you. All right. So, I'm just gonna do this in code sandbox. Why not? Is anyone having a problem with that? Let's 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 just uh, create a new vanilla code sandbox and do, uh, commandeer it for our purposes. Styling, uh, yeah, we don't need styling. Um, yeah, so we, we have a script tag with the index and the app. Okay, that that looks beautiful. And then, all right, here you go. So history lesson number one. This is the this is this is how you used to make. JavaScript frameworks, no, just talking in inner HTML. No, um, essentially what we're gonna do here, I think, is we're going to, let me make my screen a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna load a couple packages in here. We're gonna load SolidJS because we're gonna use SolidJS as, um, as a reactive system here. And we're going to load another library. This one's actually one of the, an older library that um, I know because I used this back in 2015 or 16 or whatever when I was doing stuff before I got into JSX. And basically, Riot, I don't know if you heard the Riot framework. It's, uh, it was really cutting edge in terms of single file components back around the same time Vue came out. And um, they, they, made a, they exported their templating language. And that's, that's where we're going to start here. Um, because you can use stuff like mustache or lodash. And if you look, well, if you look at stuff even like Svelte or whatever, you still see, you know, basically handlebars or mustache like templates. And this this is this is kind of the baseline for building any of these uh, tools. To build something like Petite View, you need three pieces. You need a re reactive system, you need a templating expression, JavaScript par expression parser, and you need to have your walker that um, walks the live DOM tree nodes and actually does the, the work to uh, update and keeps everything in sync. So um, we're gonna focus on the third one of those um, because we have the reactive system with, with solid and one of these two kilobyte libraries, we can just pick up off the shelf and it'll do the trick for us. Um, so yeah, let's let's just, Let's see if we can pull that in and get that working. And I, I'm, I'm gonna, I apologize ahead of time because I'm not, as usual, not the most prepared here. I am familiar with this library and it's, um, and it's like, uh, what is it? 
right right i haven't even i haven't even imported it yet that's why um and it's api but essentially let's let's see if we can get a sim simple example showing how this works because it's just like uh console log um and then we go temple and we'll we pass it in some kind of expression string with you know like hi and then name and then the second argument is just going to be an object with what we want to set so we go hi um And if all went right well here, our, our templating language turned our high name into hi Joe here. Okay. So nothing too special here. And this is gonna be kind of the like the baseline of what we're gonna use here to, to build this out. So the I mean the first thing we might want to try here is let's just import um, create signal from solid JS and just kind of see, let's go name, set name, see if we can make this resemble something. This is, this is the thing I love about reactivity. We said the name was Joe, um, is that you don't need anything else, you know, to, to do it right. Yeah, it's still we're still high Joe, and let let if I set I set the name now to Jack. Does this work? No, because we didn't call Temple again. So what we need is create render effect, um, which is a solid print pr primitive. It's like an effect. I'm just using render effect because it's basically built for rendering um, just the way it executes. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So yeah, beautiful. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jack. Um, probably unsurprising to a lot of people. Um, but this 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 should be kind of the basis of what we're doing here, right? We're, we're just going to take some template and then we're going to take the reactive system and have it create effects around you know something like this but we need to do a little bit more so where to where to next right okay so we're updating text and in the most basic thing and you could almost say the way like something like backbone used to w work in the day would be instead of console logging this they would have probably just done something like um element dot inner HTML equals this, essentially. And if we're luck, let's 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 let, let's see here. Const l equals document dot get element by id app. I, I think I think we have um, yeah we've app yeah oh I mean we're already seeing it here. Essentially. Okay, yeah. I mean, this happens so fast. Let's 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 set a timeout so we can actually get a feel for this change. Um, make it one second. Okay, so there we go. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jack. I mean, <laughs> yes. If you go in the console, it's complaining at me. Um, best kept secret. I don't like telling people this because, well, it's it's not good because bad stuff can happen. You can create stuff outside of a reactive root. It just will never get cleaned up. And in this case, I don't care that much because I'm illustrating works. This render effect will never go away. But in our case, that's that's fine. But Yes, so here we go. Hi, hi, Joe. Hi, Jack. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, but that and that that's that's where these things kind of started from. That's what I'm saying. This is kind of full circle. When people see solid, I like it should. It's it's basically from a time period before React and Vue too, to a certain degree. Yeah. 
you are correct before 1.3, but in 1.3, I changed it. So now with a normal effect, this does work. I, I did some kind of hacky scheduling thing. So it, it does work now um, because it was confusing people. Again, I, 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 I'm pretty, look, I'm going to move on for this for, for a moment, but okay. So now we're, we're rendering and in a sense, we, this, this is 2009. We just, we, we just recreated backbone essentially. I mean, they, they use their models to do it, but essentially this, this is, this is, you, you'd make a view and you could picture whatever your view was. And whenever it changed, we would replace it. Like, you know, let's, 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 let's do, let's do this, right? H1. Like this, this, this is the first, this is the first version of JavaScript frameworks. Um, this is also kind of really terrible too, because essentially you're recreating this H1 and reinserting it every time through this inner HTML. Um, you can be a little bit smarter than this, which is like the very first time, actually with this approach, you can't be smarter. This approach is just dumb. So, you know, we're going to move on from this. So what the thing is, in a sense, this approach is kind of still alive today because it, things went two different ways. Um, one way is like the fine grain reactive way, which is I'm going to show you today where things went first. But the other way was, OK, instead of making real DOM nodes here, let's make fake DOM nodes or, you know, like f create some kind of virtualized system and then have it set. And in a sense, those two directions basically spawned or split off from this initial starting point. Um, because at this point, we were just redoing everything. And one group was like, let's just focus on name. And the other group was like, let's make this not expensive. They just took two separating paths at that the early, the early days of JavaScript frameworks. So like, to, like even today to a degree, like how far is this from um, like a lit, like, uh, you know, like using a tag template literal, like doing like HTML, like, you know, you, you, you've probably all seen this, you know, how, how far, how, how far is that from, from this? Um, sorry, HTML is not defined, but you, you, there's one huge difference though, between lit and this approach and why, um, most fine grained libraries don't use this approach is because with, with lit these holes, you don't have access to it. It was like what I was just saying a moment ago, the, the fine grained people focused on the holes and the like VDOM top down people f focused on like, you know, like making this part cheap, making the, the part that wasn't the holes cheap. Because the difference um, is, is this. See how I'm calling name here and it's working? What if I called name here? It's still working. That, that is sort of the different mentality here because um, when you have something like lit, you don't get to analyze or look at the holes. When you have a string template, you do. So here we can actually clean up our code a bit and pass name in directly and have the template call our signal. So, okay, let's, what's our next step from here? Because obviously uh, we didn't come here to build backbone. Well, templating is still going to be the center of this, but now we want to put our template in our HTML. We want it in here, so stuff's going to be broken for a little bit. But let's let's move our template into here, right? That that's that's what we're really after. And right now, since we're inner HTML, well, actually, you can see it for a second. <laughs> see, isn't that lovely? Um, but yeah essentially this is this is the direction we're going we, we want we, we want our template to be in our um html and we're going to build out our template over here so now we need to kind of re-examine this so we have our mount element um i'm just going to call it mount here and have a reactive system uh yeah that's fine we have our i'm just calm this up for a second we have a reactive 
active system, we have our templating language, and now we need to get our kind of DOM tree walker going. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just building. Let's just start building something out here. I, we're going to need a, like a render method, and a render method is going to take um, probably our mount element, and it's going to take, I'm going to call it context. The system is all built off this kind of idea of context. Uh, as uh, it was mentioned earlier, you don't really have a component system in here. And it's sort of true because your data is, this is very like old school MVC or MVVM where your data is like its own tree that you pass in top level. So if you had components and pieces, they kind of need to all come in through through your app and then your views all are all kind of being rendered from your your template your for HTML, so there are different contexts, you know, different kind of conceptual components and reusable pieces, but essentially they all have to be wired in top level. So, um, yeah, let's let's do that. And what what's our render method going to do? It's going to probably um, create a root, right? It's a solid app, and. It's going to, let's see what else we're going to do here. We're going to need to, let's see. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to need to create um, a walker, essentially. We're going to need to create a way of um, kind of like walking through our, walking through our, our DOM. So um, let's, let's, let's first, Resolve our thing. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this maybe data for now because I'm gonna use context throughout. And um, I'm, let's define our co context as um, it's kind of like that. So the the signature of render is going to basically take a function, kind of like solid's normal render function. Um, I, I guess I, I reverse the order of these. Maybe this is more natural. Um, for people used to kind of solid or react, kind of put them out in a second. And then we're going to need a walk function. We could use tree walker, but I'm not going to bother, where we have our mount element and our data context, essentially. Um, so that, and, and the basic idea for this walker is going to probably be pretty simple. It's, it's, it's essentially going to, let's see here. We need to get our element and our context, and we need to kind of... Yeah, the mount element's the initial one. So let, let's see here. We can basically just walk to the children, right? So we could be like, let, we can maybe make a next equals element dot first child, maybe. And then be like, while next, let's, uh, I don't know, maybe next equals walk. I think of how we do this. Yeah, L context. Oh, I'm, I'm missing something. Or because you want to walk into the children first, or L, or just, don't mind me. I just I, I'm just gonna think about this. Yeah, next context or next dot next sibling. So what we're, we're what we're just doing is a very simple tree walk that's depth first. So we go into the the child, and then we see if it has a child. And we and if it doesn't have a child, then we we move on to the next sibling. We just kind of walk all the way through the tree. So um, let's clear our console here for a second, and let's maybe if we console log every let's let's just console log every element here to make sure that what we're doing makes sense. Right, we're not we're not even calling this yet. What what's our mount point here? Um, let's go. Um, We'll do it here. Let's go render. Um, name. We'll just do that for now. Or right, it's a function. Okay. That looks probably good, right? our root element, then a text element, 
then our H1 element, and then a text element and another text element. Okay, so essentially, um, yeah, see this text element is the text inside, and then this last text element is the on the outside. So essentially we have, if we're looking at our index HTML, it's because I, I, there's a text element here for like the new line, there's this, the text inside, and then the text here with a new line. So um, our very basic walker appears to be working. Um, all right, let's let's kind of continue along this path here. Um, okay, so that's good. What we need to do next, I think, is we need to do some work other than console logging here. So let's um, let's let's figure out. I think it's going to be the work's going to be in here technically. So let's just make like a process node maybe let's call it my problem for like making this the stuff out before i make the stubs so and then we'll pass next and context the whole thing here is about passing the context over and over again so um we have a render function we have our walk okay and then we have a process done so function process node l context again okay so what are we going to do in process node well we're going to, first thing we want to know is what kind of element we're dealing with, I think. So we, we're going to go like um, once type equals L dot node type. This is, and basically depending on if it's a text node or uh, uh, other code, an element, we can do different stuff. So we're going to do like if type equals one, which is an element. Let's make a little comment. Element do something else if type equals three. Um, the sandbox is probably not going to play nice with you. This is a text node. Okay. Right now we're just focusing on the text node though, so I don't I don't think it probably matters too much. So yeah, okay. Uh, it's not erring anymore, is it? Let's see here. Sorry, am I am I liking for you for you all? Um, how is my internet connection? Is it? Oh, I see what's going on. I wonder if I can change internet on while on stream without it uh, without it all dying on me. Because um, I'm on my two G, two point four G network, not on my five G network. All right. Should I risk it or should we just keep on going? I'm like on the, I'm in the furthest part of my house. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the furthest part of my house from the network. It's just because that's where the kids, where they, where they, where they, where, where my, uh, my kids sleep. So, okay. Let's hope this is okay. Yeah, yeah, Theo, that was me switching the the network to 5G. 5G has worse, um, what do you call it, um, distance though? Yeah, I did switch and it didn't kill the stream, but it did blow up for a second. And I think that's what you guys just saw. Sweet, okay. So let's, let's continue with this example. Um, all right, text node. So this is, if we get a text node, now, what can we do here? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is um, kind of, let's see here. I, I think temple, te if I remember template, they have a nice helper here for us. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, best way to learn the docs is go to the tests, right? To, they, they have two extra helpers that I think are help, going to help us here. The, the one I'm looking for is like a has key or something or is is expression or something. Just a second. Let's try expression. Sorry. Just bear with me here. It's been a while. Um, I'm pretty sure 
we'll find what we're looking for here in the tests. Okay. Okay, loop keys. This is this we'll need that later. Has expression. Okay, has expression. Temple not has expression. Okay, cool. That's what we want. Okay, so what we're gonna do is like if temple dot has expression. And for now, I'm just going to assume that like it's going to be reactive. You know, um, we can, we can basically well let's just not enter HTML anymore. But we, we can we should be able to just uh, do something very similar to this, right? Create render effect and have it go like um, l dot. This is not going to be a text node, so we can go l dot data equals, and then this will be context. And then this will be the, the data, right? So um, let's, 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 we need to get the data first, I think. So uh, let's go next dot data, or sorry, L dot data. So if it, and then what we want to do is we want to store the template. See the the thing is this template we need to reuse over and over again as it updates. So we actually want to like store like the I can't use template. Let's just call it text from the original text from the data because this 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 will be the, our our original like handlebar text thing, right? And then what we want to do is we want to pass that text into here, and that way we can reuse the template over and over again. Okay. So what did I do wrong? Unknown tag, name is not a function. Interesting. Oh, this is, this is like, a, this is like JavaScript. I should have, There we go. Um, arrow function thinks this is the function parameter is not passing an object, you know, that whole thing. But okay, S sorry, that kind of defeated our big moment here. Uh, we, we did it. Well, wait, <laughs> see, now our template is not nowhere to be found here. And it is right here. So high name. Except we have this lovely high name before we do Joe Jack. Um, yes, some great comments here. Thank you. Um, uh, you're right. The way I did the walk was so they return next. Luckily, there's only one element right now. So, yeah, let's just uh, let's 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 just fix that up a bit. Um, so, walk needs to return next. Um, whatever is the final, well, yes, let's see here. What, what am I missing here? Cause it's going to go next. Yeah. It, it's not next though that it, it needs to return. Yeah. That's actually a good point. We need to think about this for a second because the problem is it, it's going to keep on going until it's exhausted itself through all its children. So when it comes, when it, the only time we need it is actually when it goes into the first child, which means that's the only time we need it to actually, actually return um, that first child. Yeah, that's actually that's that's actually interesting because it's actually it's 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 actually um, I'm just gonna hack this for a minute um, and we'll, we'll just worry about this later. But essentially, it's 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 actually actually no, it's not first. It's actually the last sibling that it wants. Huh? Yeah, this loops wrong. Because essentially, we, we want the last value before it becomes null. Right? Because it, once it's null, um, essentially, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have a, 
an issue here. Um, so th this this is this that that's actually a very good point. Um, hmm. Right now, well, yeah, okay. Hmm. The funny thing is nothing's breaking yet. So part of me wants to continue until we actually break something, but uh, essentially, it's almost like we want, Yeah, it's almost like we want one more temporary variable, um, like like this, essentially, um, and then essentially, and then more like when we start the next loop, we set current to to next. There's probably a, a nicer way of doing this, which means I technically don't even, I just need to let current, um, but and then so basically like this and then If it, if it returns null, null, and then it'll null itself out, and okay, I, I, let's let's leave it at this for now. I, I think this is essentially. Are there, did I just break it? No. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna notice right here is this is ugly. Like, what the hell is this, right? And this is what they all used to do. They all used to flicker really terribly um, because you, you your server would render the template and you would see that template. Um, so we actually get. So we're, we're like um, we're gonna do something funny here and render it. I mean, it's just silly here, but we're gonna we're gonna go. We're just gonna we're just for now. We're just gonna go style equals. There's other ways to do this, but we're just gonna go display none. And then in our render function, we're gonna take the mount element style. equals uh, their default. I don't know. Let's just do block for a second and make sure I'm not insane. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Got rid of showing the template, and I can probably do this at the end. There we go. So that cleans it up a little bit. Hi Joe. Hi Jack. Okay. So we we have our First thing, we have text binding going now, okay? Yeah, this is, I, I, as I said, I believe there's probably better. Um, I, I'm gonna remember this and come back to it if I broke something later, but let's let's just kind of, I'm just gonna go with this for now. Just, so the fun part of doing this stuff on the fly, you never know how it's gonna turn out. Okay, so what's, what's the next thing we wanna do? Maybe we want, yeah, yeah, yeah. L you know this timeout. Let's let's try and make this more like um, maybe how we'd write our actual app um, a bit. Let's see. Let's let's go um, render, and then we're gonna return name. And I, one of the, one of the cool things I think you're gonna you might immediately notice about what what's happening here. I'm gonna put the create signal in here and kind of get that going is this should start looking like a view setup function to you. Like th there's no, there's, there's no uh, coincidence. Like what we're doing today is going to, is, is view came out of this time period. Um, oh, right. Yeah, we can't, we can't, this also needs to go in here. But yeah, you know what? Like 
so here's our top level component, but it's just returning its data. Um, let's see here, Joe Jack. Okay, so let's get rid of the set timeout. L maybe that's the next thing. Let's let's add like an event handler, or let, let's 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 add events to this simple setup here. So instead of doing a timeout, maybe we can have a button that we click, and then essentially that will uh, that that will that will do the trick for us. So um, let's. Yeah, let's 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 change this around a bit. I'm, I'm just lazy. Let's just make our H1 into a button. Okay. Here we have multiple versions of solid. All right, I forgot about this. Code sandbox is really touchy. You can do edits and it'll update with their like HMR here, but if you don't save the file and you refresh, it'll all the HTML will always be out of date where the JS will be updated. It's just a little quirk of code sandbox. Okay. So we want to get rid of the set timeout. So what we want is to pass set name to our data function. And see, this is another reason why unidirectional flow was probably never popular with these libraries, you know, where you generally like have a signal signal that was also a writer. Because when you're returning the data like this, it gets very verbose to return these tuples all the time, right? Um, so, you know, again, I, I feel like, like you start feeling views kind of inspiration here a lot when going through this kind of example. So we have name, set name, and then we need to do something with a DOM, with a DOM node. So um, let's kind of, let's just walk through the attributes, I think is what we need. So. We're gonna let's like let's do like a maybe like a four of loop. Um, and I think we can just I think attributes are spread are um, iterable. So I think we can do like a we can do something like key value maybe it's a key value um, of spread l dot attributes. I want to say. Let's let's try that, and then like, well, let's let's see what we get here. Console log key value. Let's see. Okay. Well, let's first console log and see if we actually have any elements here. Good. So I am doing something wrong. Okay. Let's go L. Good. L dot attributes. Um, okay. Seems fine. Hmm. Um, do, 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 do. Let's think here. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if it is actually iterating something here. Maybe if I put like a string here, we'll see it. No. Okay. So, well, actually, I got rid of that console log. So soon, let's. An empty array. Interesting. Well, let's see what the L is. Oh, of course. <laughs> there are no attributes. I'm, I'm like <laughs> Ryan. With the, we gotta we gotta add what we want before we do it. Um, so how do they do it in view like this? Right, at click, and then you go like. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's our attribute. And what are we going to do? Set name to Jack. So save our file. And okay, so the, the, I'm not crazy. This is this is right. It's not key is wrong. Maybe it's, oh, it's name. Name, 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 name. Click. Okay, perfect. So that's what we're dealing with. Okay. So let's go and find our click attribute and then name value. So how do we know that it's a it's an event handler? Well, because it has an at sign. So we can go if name 
index, or actually just if name zero equals at, we know we have an event handler. So what do we need to do? At that point, it's just element dot add event handler. And then we want to slice what like name slice one, like everything after the first. And then we want the value. So I think it's just, we can just use our temple thing again and just go value context. I think we're going to be doing this a lot today. What am I missing? Is not a function. What am I doing here? This is the fun part. Uh, oh, it's event listener. God, why, why am I tired this week? Oh, yeah, okay. I see the problem. Do you know why this isn't work? <laughs> Do you know why this isn't working? Let's, let's console log value for a second. I think I, I know why. Because I didn't wrap it in our in our nice little uh, curly braces. But I think we don't need to do the curly braces here because we have the at sign. So I think this is slicker. So why don't we just, um, why don't we, yeah, why don't we, yeah, see, yeah, there's no at sign here. Or why don't we just change this slightly so it's like, uh, like let's just add the brackets around it here like that. All right. Is oh right, because I need to make it a function. Nice, it works. So we load it, draw hi Joe, we click it, it turns to hijack. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. I'm just sloppy tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're getting there. So now we have an event hand. Now we have event handlers in our in our template here. So what do we want to do next? So we have text, we have events. Um, let's add data binding, right? Yeah, let's let's add, let's add, let's add data binding um, or nothing too fancy. Why? What if we? let the button have a title so that it has like a, a over remember you what do they do is it cool? yeah they're not going to show me here this gets colon. Let's just go with colon. It doesn't really matter. We can change the delimiter later if we don't if we don't like make it a dollar sign. Let's 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 make another template. One of the cool things here is because we're using these kind of delimiter characters, we don't actually have to leverage the interpolation characters here. So let's make it. I mean, yeah. Let's just use name again. Um, let's just go like hola. Um, name so. And right now, when we hover it, or maybe I have to save the template. Oh, right, because this is an actual title. This is, yeah, you know what? We should probably clean up after ourselves, too, because it occurs to me when, I, when, I, when we look at this, we're going to see the at click on there still. We probably don't want that, just like we have this title the reason we're not seeing the title is because it has a colon in front of it it's not it's not it's not you know interfering with the other one but it's also like completely unnecessary so we almost want a pattern where we actually um remove these um essentially um but let's let's it's not probably not a big deal let's yeah if here we can we can go l dot um, remove attribute. I'm not even iterating it. You know, let's 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 just click doesn't 
put some nice notification. Let's not worry about that. Let's do let's do another one. Let's go if name zero equals colon. So now we're gonna do the data binding case. This one's kind of a cross between the other two because um, we're going to want to make a, a render effect again, essentially for here. And this time it's a date data. We're going to go set attribute. Um, name slice one value is. So we need to get instead of text this time we have we have to we have to get the attribute right so um attribute equals um l dot get attribute uh, i guess i'll do that too const So we don't have to do this all multiple times. And then this value is now our new template. And it's else attribute. All right. No, okay, well, we're, we're getting there. So we are setting a title. We're just not setting the right one. Uh, let's let's see here. Um, why are we not setting the right one? And while we're at it, we probably should go um, l dot remove attribute um, attribute. It's null. Let's figure this one out. Okay, so uh, what do we what do we got here? Look at our template. Is it because I'm not calling name as a function? No. Okay. It was or actually let's double check, but We're going to keep solid reactivity rules here. So, okay, not that, but worth it. It's because we, we didn't have the curly braces again. So we need to do this this little this trick here to add the curly braces. So we're kind of, we need to do this. And when we hover, Okay, still not working. Okay, let's let's look at what we're dealing with here. We have after context. Oh, sweet. Okay, so adder is nothing. Okay, so that's our problem. We don't. What I'm doing here is wrong. Yeah, of course. It has a yeah. Uh, let's see here. No, sweet. And at her name. Right, because this is just me being stupid. We need to get the original one, not the and when the attribute we need to remove is the original one. Uh, essentially. Uh, where did I add an extra thing or didn't? Yeah. Yeah, so it, we want to get the original name. Why does that break it? Oh, 
Okay. And then we want to, but that's, that's better. We're just breaking something else now. And then we want to move. And then, yes, you are absolutely right. This one doesn't actually need the wrapper because we are using interpolation. I am, I'm not, I, I've got, I, for some reason, I, yeah, for some reason I just wasn't, yeah. Olegio, click, Olejack, yeah. I mean, we don't need to, it's just, it's, it's yeah, you're right, we don't need to. It just clouds up the stuff. So yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I was getting ahead of myself here a bit. Okay, so now we have attributes and we have, as you can see here, well, the jack. So we have attributes, we have event handlers, we have text. Um, the next thing we need is probably more interesting. Um, I think like this, with, with just data binding attributes and data binding click handlers, you can do a lot. What we need now is control flow. Right, our, our template is not very useful as it is right now. Um, we can't really do much with it. All right. So let's 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 take this to the next level. I mean, to be fair, you can do a lot with with just this kind of with just these alone. But we we want to we want to conditionally render something or do a loop or something. Um, which one should we do first? Should we do a loop or should we do a list? Let's do, let's do, let's, let's do, let's probably, it, sorry, loop is a list or, or an, a conditional. If is probably slightly easier to do. So maybe, 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 maybe we should do if. Yeah, let's, I guess we should do if. What if, let's, 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 Make the, let's move our text to a let's let's move it here maybe here interesting this is this is this is showing me how my, our walker is broken probably yeah so. Maybe we should fix that up first. Yeah. Yeah, so the walker is broken right now. Knew that we would hit an error with that eventually. Let's let's kind of look at that for a second. Um, so what's happening is it's going in and then the last current one was that That's interesting. Yeah, that's the, the my maybe my walk mentality here is just is just wrong. Cause like go next. Yeah. My I think I I think I don't I, I think I just was <laughs> yeah, or I could use tree rocker. Yeah. I think I think I I think I think I was just thinking about this maybe a little bit wrong because this 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 seems to work here um yeah so i'm, I'm let's let's just yeah let's just okay let's just continue on here okay so what if we wanted to See. Yeah, okay. Let's instead of I mean we can just leave this here too because let's just keep on going, but let's add another signal, maybe like a visible sig signal, like visible set visible.
and then actually, okay, I got an idea. We won't do that. We'll just we'll just, we'll just keep it like this for a moment. Um, and let's just let's let's just do something silly where we're like only show this. So let's 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 invent something. S if you know it was a B if or something. If um, our condition will be if name is bigger than name dot length is bigger than two. Essentially. So the idea here is when it's Joe, it won't show the high, but then when we click it to Jack, it'll be bigger than two and then it'll show it. The way the directives work is you put them on the element and it's the element itself that actually uh, goes in and out. So yeah, yeah, let's let's just do that. Okay. And then now we need some different logic here because the way um, the directives work is actually a little bit interesting because, because it reuses the node like I was talking about you actually have to cache and handle a node completely separate from this like loop we're doing here. Like it, it, it kind of pulls it out. So we actually have the special case, the directives before we do the attribute loops. Cause we're, we're not, we're actually going to not process the, um, we're not going to process the attributes uh, right away. Um, we're going to actually wait until they get inserted because it's potential of them not getting inserted. So it's more like we first have to go, you go like, if uh, l dot get attribute or maybe maybe has has attribute s four or whatever we want to call it, then we do some logic and it's actually going to happen beforehand. So we need to do a little work here. Essentially, we need to be able to um, cache the node. Um, I think so. We, we we have to kind of think about this first. Let's or actually we're doing S F. Why did I do S four S F? Did I do S F? I did S F. Right. We need to we need to get the expression first, right? That we're going to be using. So we can go you know uh, L dot get attribute S F, and then what else do we need to do? We need to we need to ultimately remove it, um, remove. And the, this one we have to remove. Um, the other ones we didn't need to, but this one we do because it'll create an infinite loop otherwise, because it'll like, it will prop, when we go to insert it, it'll see the if again, and then try and try and do, like process it again. We, we need to process it only once. So this one is, is essential that we remove it. Um, and then we're gonna need some, uh, conditional logic, and I've written this one enough times that I kind of know know what it looks like. But it, essentially, to do an if um, in solid, you need to, we, we use two memos: one to wrap the condition, and the one one to wrap the the whole thing. And this way, you know, we're not if the condition doesn't change its boolean, we can isolate the change. Um, so we, we got we basically boolean cast whatever the template expression is, so that like it like the the problem here is like if if name is if, if we were changing like the name one, two, three, you don't want to rerun the whole thing. You only want to actually re-render this or change anything when it switches from false to true or true to false. You don't want for every single step to re-render the whole element. So this is why we split into two memos. So in here, we'll need a template that will um, uh, take our, um, yeah, that'll take our, what should we call it? Um, I think this one we aren't escaping. So this one we will need to do this again. And I call it expression and pass it to context. All right. Get memo's not defined. Okay, sweet. Create memo. And then the next thing besides that is we're going to need to actually write our conditional logic, which will be another memo, I'm thinking. Um, let's call it, what do you call it? Call it show, yeah, basically like our. And then in this one, we read from our condition. So I guess get our value, right? Const, do we already have value in the scope? Maybe we don't, whatever. Const value, 
equals our condition, and then um, basically our actual condition statement. So if there's a value, do some stuff, else, um, well, actually there is no else, we did, else we just return nothing, right? Um, and then finally, we're going we're gonna to want to insert it in the DOM. Um, hmm. Yeah, we have a few options here. Since we're using solid, I'm, how are we doing for time? It depends on how far I want to, I want to implement this. Okay, we're at 125 and I still want to do the for loop. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, since this, I'm going to do this. Um, if we have time, we'll get back to this, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull uh, insert from solid JS web, um, which, uh, what the hell is, why am I, that was really weird. I don't know why there's a TypeScript file showing up here. Insert from solid JS web and uh it's it, it it's it's going to um it's going to insert our text node um and it handles a few of the extra cases um essentially so we need a parent which we haven't got yet and then oh sorry and then we need the expression which is this show expression, and then possibly a marker. I think we're gonna, do, we're gonna use a marker to be safe. So, okay, so that probably doesn't mean a ton to any of you right now. So let me explain what I'm what we're gonna do. First, we need to get our parent node. So before we, we, we're, we're doing anything here, we need, let's just, let's just get, yeah, let's, let's get our parent because we haven't done it yet, but we actually have to remove this whole element um, from the view as part of this process. So pretty early up here, we probably want to um, get the parent before we remove it from the view. So we'll be like l.parent node. And then, so we're gonna insert in our parent and then we are going to have our accessor, which is show, and then we're gonna have a marker. And what the marker, is just going to be a text node. So we're going to go. This will just keep track. So when we're as we're adding and removing stuff, we have a, an anchor so that um, it knows like where to insert it. You can think of this as basically a fancy insert before. I just know that this handles a few edge cases that so I didn't want like I could probably just do insert before here and it probably just work. But this handles the reactivity resolution a, a bit. So okay, let's 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 go. So let's uh, marker um, is marker equals document dot create text node, and then we're gonna go maybe maybe replace with. Let's go l. I, I, this is a newer DOM API, but I've just been I, I I've just been loving this one recently. Now it's gone, which is right. So the, the reason we had to do that, and actually before we do that, we should cast stash it. Um, I mean, we don't have to, I guess. Actually, we don't have to because we, we, we always have this L now. The re, the, I'm not explaining myself the best here, I, I admit. So if you have questions, do throw them in the chat. But essentially, we kind of like in the same way that we had to keep this text around to know what the template is. We have to keep the element around um, because what, what we're going to be doing is every time that it's true, we're going. To, our first thing is we're going to make our new node, and we're going to do that by cloning it. So we need to clone the node that was there, um, so that we basically get a new node every time. But that node is a is a fresh node that hasn't been processed yet. So we need to process that node and then potentially walk through any of its uh, children. Um, and 
finally, we need to return that node as, as the value that we're inserting and context and then context. All right, Let's see that. Yeah. not quite. Almost, <laughs> that was interesting um, because it half worked, but we're seeing the old value. I know why. The reason we're seeing the old value is because on the initial render, even though we're removing the node and stuff, it's like we're not. It's still going through and walking and doing all this stuff and 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 um, and and processing the children. We return what happens. Okay, still same problem. So we actually have to tell it to stop um, processing and where to continue from. So actually we're gonna return the marker because the marker is the one thing that we know is always gonna be there and it's always gonna be at the end of our of our if statement. So by returning the marker, we, we, we kind of get that, but it means that we need to change our logic for our walk because if process node returns something, then we have to actually, like we don't wanna walk to the children essentially is, is I think that's the logic that we're gonna use here. Um, because yeah, so let, let, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about this. I know I went through and made everything current, but I'm not gonna worry about this current thing because it seems to be messing with stuff right now or do, it's just not doing anything. But let's, let's just, um, if, if we need another variable here to store the node that comes through, but if this is the else, else we just walk to the ch children and continue. But if if there is something there, we need to we need to kind of continue to the next sibling and skip over the children essentially. So let's let's just I don't know. Let's call it something else. Let's call it stop. I know that's probably a terrible name, but stop equals this. Then next needs to become stops next sibling. It's walking to the sibling, not to the children. And then we clear it. Okay. Ooh, Code Sandbox just loves this. Like, oh, right, it doesn't like assigning in an if statement. Well, whatever, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, essentially, we needed if 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 we're processing a directive, we don't want to walk into the children because what we do is we we hoist out, we actually grab the original element, the one that had, you know, all of this stuff and all the templating stuff, and we save it for later. Essentially, we 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 just hold on to it in this closure, essentially, so that when we go to render it, we get to process it for the first time here and actually if these were ever nested we probably don't want to walk the children if there's like another if there's like layer directives like ifs and fours on the same element or something so let's, let's see if that that does what we want yeah okay okay so this is basically what a four directive looks like it's a little bit complicated i suppose but this is this is essentially how we how how we would do a conditional in our template. Um, let's see here. Huh, yeah, that, that definitely took a little bit of mental gymnastics. Um, let's let's do a loop next. I I I, I think um, that's yeah. I, I think that's probably the loops the 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 other primary one. I think if if you have a conditional and you have a loop and you have attributes and you have text and you have event handlers, I think you actually have all the basics to build most like simple type demo type things. So let's try and make a let's 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 try and make something there. Is there any value in the if using clone node? when you're not looking at having any components in the system? Hmm, that's an interesting question. So you're saying just like insert, well, mostly, it's cause like, we're, 
Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying, because you're not making a new context. So you could actually just keep, keep it bound all the time and then have it updating off the screen. I get the four needs it and actually now I'm using it needs it because of that. Yeah, yeah, like using them in combination. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, let's do four. I think four is probably like the, I left it as like the last of our fundamental building blocks, but I think it's actually probably the most complicated of the bunch because four actually needs to create child context. Um, and this is one of the things when I was early days working on solid, I, the, I mean, you can do smart stuff and shared context, but the context was actually the performance thing. I was actually using a templating language very similar to this at the beginning before I chose JSX. And when I went to JSX, I suddenly got the, this performance boost. Um, to be fair, I'd already, there, there's, a, there's another step between this and getting to JSX, which is instead of walking the live DOM nodes, you know, taking this in as a string and parsing it, doing the AST. But even then, um, like, it depends on the, the approach you're taking to compilation. I was taking a very, like, very similar to this mentality. We were always building these nested child contexts, that, you know, and binding to them. And yeah, compared to JSX is kind of just like using the existing JavaScript scope. Um, it was definitely a lot uh, more involved and it, would, it had a bit of a performance cost. But obviously, like, co advanced compilers like Svelte don't take that hit. Okay, so let's let's continue on. I know this is pretty heavy. I, I knew this was going to be one of those topics or streams where we were, um, <laughs> you know, doing some coding. Uh, definitely requires some thinking. So okay, so we have if, and I think if is like the higher level one. So let's, like we did last time, let's build what we want to build before we, uh, like, make what we want to build before we make it, so that um, we can like see the stuff. So let's go into index template and let's we have a conditional with p let's um let's make a list and then let's um uh, list item and then this list item will have an s4 on it and i, sh I, I we were looking at the template here and it had a, a this loop thing which is really cool. This is why I chose Riot. I remember this back in the day. It actually supports like these kind of syntaxes, like the key in. So I'm not going to worry about the index so much. We're just going to be key and I. That's what let's 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 build towards that at first as a first step. So let's go. And again, because it has a special, we don't need the interpolation. So let's make it for um, item in list. And then the item in here. We'll, we'll just keep it simple initially. All right. Now, this is why you build the HTML first, so you can see the errors you make up front. So we we now have a list item with undefined in it because it doesn't it doesn't have this stuff. Okay. So let's. Let's make another signal. Yeah, let's just, th th this way we can add interactivity to it when we go. And what do they call it? I call it list. And let's initialize our list to apple, banana, orange. And again, and I see why Vue has helpers for their setup functions. If you're always like, I mean, they don't have the the the, the, the tuples, but like you're you're always like declaring it and then like passing it to like out of the function like this. So, okay, so set name has already been declared. Oh, that's probably just out of date. Beautiful. Okay, so it's our our for loop's going to work somewhat similar to this, right? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this, and okay. So do we have four? And then similarly, we're gonna get our expression, and we're gonna remove it, and we're probably gonna get the parent. In fact, I think we're probably gonna do. 
almost all of this right off the bat. I mean, it's going to be four this time, but we're probably going to do all of this. Okay, and then then is where things kind of change up a bit. Um, so. I guess we probably want to get like the information about the for loop first. So let's 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 kind of let's look at that. Return this just because I can. Okay, sweet. Um, so that information actually it's it's probably return marker again, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. That that information is going to be from that helper I was saying. So what, let's just console log it. Um, with pimple dot loop keys um, expression. Okay, I mean, oh, it's because we need to put our delimiter on it again. So key item in value list. Okay, yeah, that's useful because it actually puts the parentheses back in for you. It's actually, it actually they, they built it in a pretty smart way in that sense to actually kind of help on that. All right, so let's see here how that how this is going to work. So we know we, we get our, let's just destructure the key and value, key and val actually out of this. Const key val and race. Okay, cool, cool. Now, uh, in some ways, this one might actually be a little bit easier because mapping is a common thing you have to do in a reactive system, even without view code. So, if you if you have a reactive map function, we could probably we can just use that straight up here, right? So we can go. Um, what are you gonna call it? Not list because I'm already using list. Am I already using list? No, I, list isn't in this context. It's in our variable. So I can go const list equals create memo map array. And then our map array takes an accessor, which is going to be our expression for the val, I think. So it's going to be temple val and And it's going to, is it val or, God, I can't remember. Do, did I lose that? Okay. Yeah, it's val. I was right. Temple val context. It, so that's, and then our predicate is going to be our v, which is going to be our list iteration. And what are we going to do in here? Um, and again, we're just going to insert the list parent list before marker um and then for the value this is probably gonna be kind of similar to this but th there's one there's one key difference here we're going to need to make a new context right um because now context has changed and uh, i'm trying to think of the best way to do this because we have the key which is the item so now we need we need um, to, we need to basically assign the value from the loop iteration to the keyword item. So our context has an item because that's what we, that key or whatever is what we call it here. We need to, we need to have items so that when this processes, it has item, right? So we need a new context with item. But the thing is that I, I don't think this is sufficient because we need to spread the existing context. So we, uh, let's call it inner because we want to have the outer context still variable. Like, what if you wanted to use name um, in here inside the for loop? You you don't. If I just made the new context, so we, we actually need to make sure to get name in the in the in the context as well. So we're gonna we're gonna spread it. Um, so we have inner context key. So just if you want to see what what that looks like. Let's see if we can 
console login, see if we're on the right track here. Name is a signal, set name, listener bound, and then we have a new item, orange. Yeah, so essentially we took the existing context and we added the new key value onto it. Okay, nice. And then uh, what are we gonna do next? Uh, we need to clone our node, right? It's basically the same here. It's, 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 almost, it's almost identical to this, I imagine, actually. Maybe something we can refactor out here. Almost right. Um, all right, context is now inner. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're displaying our, our, our list. Um, let's make sure it's reactive, though. Let's make sure like that we did this right. So what if we go in our template, and instead of the button setting the name to Jack, it um, we 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 oh, I'm just gonna add Jack to the name. Was it set list? Uh, and what's solid? We can go list function form is spread existing list add Jack at the end like this. I think that's right. So we click it. Malformed arrow function. I wonder if this thing can't handle arrow functions. This this the thing is pretty old. Huh, that's fun. Um, you know what? Okay, so <laughs> this this is probably the fun part of 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 having this. Let's make it. Let's let's just make like a new. Um, I'm gonna pass this in. Unfortunately, it looks like we we found we we found the limit of our of our uh, of our templating language here. So let's make a new add. Um, Thing and let's so let's let's and maybe it says set list we'll do like add value equals set list um, l list spread list value something like that yeah and there we go now we add jack okay so okay our 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 2015 template language isn't a, isn't a perfect fit with modern arrow functions. So maybe 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 we need to do some work on our parser side. Hmm. Okay, it's, I'm pretty sure when I was doing this last with Solid, air, maybe arrow functions weren't as prevalent back then. I wonder if anyone ever opened an issue on here. But yeah, okay, it's it's cool. So. We have a conditional that works, and we have an array. And let's actually double check that our list works properly. That we're not doing something really stupid here, right? Let's let's look here, because we have a bunch of elements: marker, 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 marker. And then when I click add, it should add an. What's why is there another UL there? Interesting. Are we not removing something? Okay, let, let's let's just try. Click add. It should add the, only the one item and not re-render anything else. And that looks to be what's what's happening there. Okay. Interestingly, we have a orphaned UL. So am I not? Did I forget to replace it or remove it in this process? Um, where is it? Huh, I did. Okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, let's probably track that down. But that's that's most of it here. Okay, cool. <laughs> For the few of you that are still here, hopefully, hopefully that you see, got some value from this. But um, this this is this is kind of the majority of <laughs> this is this is like what JavaScript frameworks were 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 like in 2011 or 12 or Alpine or Petite View. This is how they're able to get them so small because essentially you only need a, maybe like a small subset of the reactive system, whatever you want to support. Um, we're, we're using insert 
from from SolidJS Web, which for the arrays is a little bit cheating because I, I didn't really um, show it off. Obviously, for the for loop, it's just an insert before, but technically, um, we need to diff the arrays as they're as they're coming in, and to do that. There's libraries out here, but one one popular one, udomdiff here, essentially, um, which it will look something like this. I'll take the parent, it'll take the current nodes, take the future nodes, and then I'll give you ability to interact with them. That all you do, you you can basically just patch that um, essentially to 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 basically pass in the like the the way this is working right now is map array in in here is mapping all of the data to real dom nodes so you you're going to have an essentially whenever you read from list you're going to have um uh, a list of the like the dom nodes that you, and some of them might be connected some of them might not be because this is this is only calling this callback function when new data comes in if existing data it just maps to the existing DOM nodes. We're not creating new DOM nodes every time. And then essentially you have this list of DOM nodes and it, all you do is you store the previous version um, uh, list each time you go through and you, pa and you pass in the new list. And essentially a helper like this will take the, the, the current list or the previous list and the current list and um, like they have this get, this is for like VDOM, but you can just refactor that out essentially. And this is for our marker that we added. And essentially this almost, this basically just diffs the list for you. Um, what, what this looks like is kind of a bit of code, but it's not as much as you might expect. It's just, it's just a pattern where essentially it it looks at both lists and it compares the indexes on the um, from from both sides. It goes from the start and from the end essentially. And as long as the start and the end are the same, it basically shrinks the list down, walking from both the start and the end until it finds the first thing that doesn't match between the two lists. And then now you're dealing with only a smaller subset of the list. And then it checks. Um, and this is kind of funny, but it checks if the head or the tail is the thing that the other one expects. So, you know, if, if you just, it's very common in lists to do like a, a swap or move. So if, if your operation is only on a single node, um, you know, where you moved or swapped or them quite often when you hit that thing, it will, the end will be the start or the start will be the end of the other one. So it just quickly checks that and swaps and then continues on shrinking it. And finally, if, 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 if it just fails through those kind of simple swaps and shrinking, um, it starts essentially adding, um, this is the else statement here, adding them to a map and then checking if, um, if, 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 if it has that node already and repositioning them with the map. So this, this is a little bit more advanced. You could have just done the whole thing with a map and it's a smaller algorithm um, but it ends up um, being a little bit slower because it's not optimized for the fast path. There's, there's some really smart ones. Uh, stage zero, um, uh, he kind of generalized it. So if you ever like want to build your own framework, um, sorry, not this one, this one. Stage zero from Freak 6 to 113. Um, he actually remade um, the the version of the reconcile that you'd use for keyed he has reuse nodes which is unkeyed and he has reconcile which is like the referential one that like solid uses that doesn't use keyed but is the same as keyed he actually has all three versions here using a, a, a much bigger algorithm but very similar but this is the fastest least move it's called um uh, it's called the list algorithm um uh, which is i always mess it up it's like longest um damn it why do i never get the name of it right S something sequence um it's like longest increasing longest increasing sub sequence um and this lets us basically identify 
um, the the smallest pieces that we can re replace. And and by it, it, algorithmically, if you do the changes in 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 this order, um, going from the longest of the sequences to the shortest, it's it, it's the least possible theoretical moves for any kind of sorting. Um, so we were using this before. We actually went to the slightly more brute force simple one because it was faster for the majority of cases. But um, again, this is, this is a good good algorithm to use. When you look at most UI frameworks, the, they're, they're actually fairly dumb here, um, to be fair. So like this one might be the, the smartest for like a completely random shuffle. UDOMDIF handles decently well because it optimizes the common cases and then it kind of defaults and then if you just use the map straight like if you ever i don't know if i want to pull it out right now but like svelte has a very very small diffing algorithm it's less performant but i mean for the most part you're not going to sorry it's in the, the svelte runtime here the runtime that doesn't exist according to some people um where are we um uh, do, 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 internal um, do, 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 loop. Here it is. Um, where is it? Clear loop, loop, no, that's not it. Where, where's the helper? It is not this one. Okay, not this one, just a second, it's not loop. It's, it's gotta be in here. Keyed each, here it is. Because without a key, you, you literally just do a for loop and just replace everything. It's really simple. Um, but um, essentially, yeah, this version is you just use two maps and then you just kind of wild loop and do the maps. And it's 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 uh, it's it's pretty small. Like there's the insert and stuff here, but the actual diffing algorithm is just update key to each. It's just yeah, well, actually, it goes to here. It's not. It's not the smallest, but it's yeah. It's like hundred lines of code instead of three hundred lines of code versus like some of the bigger ones, which are like, uh, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a little bigger than that. So, um, the great thing is all these uh, libraries that do this are out there. So like most of the time, there's a certain type of person who works and perfects these. Like the creator of EV, uh, Boris Call, you know works through, comes up with the best algorithm. Every Then everyone else just uses it. Like if you look in the VDOM libraries, like 70% of them use SnapDOM and, you know, you DOMDIF we've been using uh, in solid. And actually there's a list diff benchmark. I, I forgot, I think I forgot to show this in my previous uh, benchmark episode, but there, there is a list diff benchmark. Let me just, bye bye. Um, and the list diff benchmark, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Um, who is it? It's, it's a guy from uh, uh, Sinuous Developer. Uh, let's just find it. Sinuous. Another reactive library. I'm going to put chaos on the end of the way you never find loop. Yeah, there it is. Diff or GS diff benchmark. Um, everyone's probably using like a version of this. Stage zero is basically the EV algorithm, and you can see the size of the algorithm. And then there's like a comparison chart for a bunch of different uh, things. So I, I saved us the time of going through and re implementing this or you know, making it work to our thing. So that's just what the solid insert thing goes. Like if it's an array, do the diff. If it's a simple value, insert around the marker. It, basically, I kind of saved us from going through this, but essentially, um, you know, this this looks a lot like the JS framework benchmark because a lot of lists, it, it just tests a lot of different lists things. The only thing is this, this benchmark doesn't test the cost of the DOM. So it unfairly, make it only tests the overhead of of the like javascript part which is a little bit unfair um to some of the algorithms because like stage zero for i forget which one there's a, there's like a sort or swap one yeah here shuffle it it shuffles a thousand rows in 18 
1888 moves. And this is like a, it's, it, it's not random. It's randomized. So like no algorithm can game it, but they all get the same problem to solve. Whereas some of them, most of them, like some take 2000, a lot of them take, you know, 1980 udom only saves two moves out of them out of the like typical map possible moves in this case whereas um stage zero is like saves hundreds of moves so for actual dom uh where you're doing a lot of shuffling this algorithm has some benefits it's just like three times larger than the other ones so kind of cost size evaluation there um yeah i don't know uh so that that explains like the missing part of insert essentially so I don't know. Does anyone have any other questions? I don't know what else to, to do with this right now. We could like play around a little bit and make something, but for the, for the most part, um, I'm going to just name this. What am I going to name this? Uh, uh, it's not progressive enhancement, as I already explained, but like simple uh, HTML render and uh, post that in chat. You can kind of play around with it. And uh, I don't know, if, if there's nothing else, maybe we just call this one a, a night. Um, maybe not the most enthralling content, but this is the kind of stuff that the internals of frameworks work, even when they're not using this kind of technique, when they're using like AST compilation stuff, the runtime still tends to look a, a lot like this, at least for a, react, a reactive runtime. This has all the fundamental pieces. Um, it's just a little bit, buggy. The question is, do I take this further and actually release a library with it? I'm probably not going to do that. Probably not. Um, we already saw some limits in the templating language, which means we probably need to find one. And we'd have to, we probably want to make sure that it's small. So we'd have the performance, um, you know, benchmark it and look at like the different stuff. But this, this, uh, hopefully, you know, if, if you ever felt like, you know, getting started and building your own frameworks, it's, this could be, you know, uh, a little bit of a lesson to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's call it. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I hope you had a great holiday break and you didn't all get COVID, um, which is very serious right now, but uh, yeah, till next time.